Hello and welcome to Firearm Freedom. This is going to be another upgrades video. In today's upgrades video, we are taking a look at the Tipman M422. And before we get this video started, I wanted to give a quick shout out to this video sponsor, which is Seal One. Seal One makes a wide variety of firearms maintenance products, primarily in the way of cleaning. They make everything from saturated circular bore patches that you can push through with a jag that do a really good job at cleaning the bore. And they also make a liquid, a paste, and an aerosol version of their CLP. The liquid and the paste is non-toxic, so you don't have to worry about any harsh chemicals or anything like that. It does a very good job. This is a partnership that I am excited about because I use this product consistently. It's one of the main things that I use to clean the firearms that I have. They also make a Sub-Zero Seal 1, so getting into the colder months here in Pennsylvania, that's kind of what you want to start shifting to if you're going to be leaving your gun outside or in an area that could potentially freeze, definitely check out Seal One. I really appreciate their support here on the channel. The Tipman M422. I am very happy to have this thing back on the channel. You guys can see here that we have swapped out a few things on the M422. This originally was a micro elite pistol with a seven inch barrel and a brace on the end. You can see that it is now in the SBR category. So we have swapped out the brace for a stock and also added a vertical grip up here in the front. Now we're gonna be kind of going over everything that I made here and also touching on the new reliability that I'm getting out of the Micro Elite pistol here. This made it on the channel before in a few different videos and ultimately the reliability was so-so when it came to running the Tipman on the channel. We're gonna talk about if that has changed. The brace that came with the Micro Elite pistol was pretty phenomenal. It was a Tipman manufactured brace and they did a good job of making it actually adjustable on the buffer tube. And they even had a metal piece here in the back to keep the section that goes around your forearm pushed into place so that it does not easily move back and forth. I have swapped that out for this LWRC CQB stock. Now this is a stock that I've actually had lying around in the, the parts bin for years. A buddy gave it to me a long time ago and he did not give me the short buffer tube. He said, hey, I'm using that for something else, so here's a stock, I'm not gonna use it. And I never really had a use for it because how LWRC markets this is they have a shorter than usual buffer tube to allow you to get this thing flush against the castle nut of the AR and also still be super compact in the rear. Without that LWRC buffer tube, you can see here that you're still gonna have a little bit of space not the end of the world and it also is very small and compact but on most guns that I was putting it on it just it didn't look right it was much too small and it just it wasn't anything that was like 10.5 or above it just didn't really have the, the the aesthetic that I was looking for although it is very practical to use when it comes to body armor on this very tiny 22, however, it looks phenomenal. They got the job done well. Of course, it fits the standard buffer tube that Titman puts on here. So it's a relatively easy switch to take that brace off and slap the stock on here. And now we are good to go. The controllability of this stock is really nice. Still has a little bit of wobble to it, but we're talking about a 22 here. So really not the end of the world. I kept the Titman pistol grip. You guys remember me talking in previous videos about how this pistol grip was a little bit of a weird one to switch out. I switched it out and because they have a slight difference here in how the safety detent works because it is a 22, I was not able to get great fitment out of other Magpul grips and other things that I tried. So I decided just to keep this grip and wrap it with a little bit of goon tape that helped on the traction section there, which was one of my complaints about it before. So this allows me to really grab hold of it and I don't really have any issues with that. I do have a Vortex Spark up here on the top and this is a Spark 2, so it's a little bit better than the Spark 1, but we're... <laughs> 
we're talking about much older red dot technology here compared to where everything is at nowadays. But on a 22, this optic gets the job done just fine and I don't really have any major complaints. It was just kind of rotten away in a parts bin. So the fact that I can get some use out of it here on this 22 is, is great for me. Now I did have some Midwest flip up sights this sight set is phenomenal and is quite frankly very much overkill for a 22 long rifle. But I did have Midwest actually send me this sight set to check out on the channel and I wanted to throw it on this 22 to not only feature the sights in this video but also just kind of get the feel for them on a few different guns. So this is the first gun that I'm going to be running these sights on for a little bit but these are not going to have a permanent home here. They're going to be swapped out to another actually another 308 build I got coming in here soon so stay tuned for that but this is just kind of the first go at these midwest sites on this particular build i have messed with these before on another build and they're they're phenomenal sites i've ab absolutely no complaints about them but they definitely do much better than the titman factory sites those sites, unfortunately, they just, the way that they grip the rail, I just, I think it leaves a little bit to be desired. But with that being said, we, you know, we're talking about a 22 here out of box. And the fact that they send it with backup irons is really cool. Although they're not the highest quality backup irons, they're going to do just fine to get some rounds down range and get them down range accurately. Now, for the majority of this video, I was running the Silencer Co. Sparrow up here in the front. No complaints at all about this suppressor. It does a very good job. It was my first 22 can. And I really think that this suppressor is probably going to find a permanent home here on the Titman. It just does a, a really good job and it, it just, it mates well with the Titman. So I don't really have any complaints at all with that can. And I was running at the range exclusively this past range day for this particular upgrades video. And I didn't take it off a single time and I had no complaints with it. So I'm probably going to leave this Sparrow on the Titman here and just call it a day. Titman does a really good job of getting the threads, which I think I mentioned in a previous video, the threads are actually shorter than what you would normally find on like a 15, 22 or standard AR-15. And the reason why they do that is because if you have a 22 suppressor like this and you try to put it on those long threads, you need a spacer. You need an additional piece because the threads are too deep and it does not fit in the suppressor. So Tipman kind of thought ahead here and just shaved them in half. And that allows you to not have to use an adapter, thread the can right on and you're good to go. To top off the upgrades, I did add on a BCM vertical grip and I, I don't know that that's entirely necessary on the 22, but you kind of have to when it's in this configuration. And I will say in these very short rails, I dig the vertical grip. It gives me a really nice ability to lock my hand into place when I'm not working with a lot of real estate. And it does a better job, in my opinion, of a rail this size than a grip stop would. And I did have a grip stop on here before, but the vertical grip just feels a lot better. And quite frankly, how freaking fast this gun is to zip around at the range is ridiculous. It is already working with a short seven inch barrel and with having no weight really overall, cause I'm not having a light or anything like that on it. It just, the target transitions are insane. And getting into the shootability, is it running any better? I will say yes, it, it seems to be. So I had one magazine that started to act a little strange at the range, and that could be because of the way that I loaded it. Tipman has a very specific way that they want you to load these magazines, and I try to do it that way, but when I'm at the range, just kind of throwing rounds in, sometimes maybe they're not loaded right. So as far as past reliability issues, I'm kind of up in the air. I think it is between ammunition, manufacturing problems, Mags, which I talked about in my Mark IV right. video of just being way overly waxed. And I think that had a huge thing going on here with the Titman as well. I don't want to really hit the Titman as much once I found out that a lot of the issues with my Mark IV were ammunition related on just modern 22 ammo being trash these days. I also really, really made it a point to just scrub away every nook and cranny in the ejection port area and the bolt face area of the Titman, which it got very, very dirty since the last range day. And I just wanted to make sure it was like spotless in there with no 
carbon built up or lead debris or wax or anything. So I wanted to give it the best chance it had. And of course, in the beginning of the range day, it had yeah. no issues whatsoever. When it was clean, when it was well lubricated, this thing was running no problem. As we got past about three mags, that was that magazine that was acting a little weird and I'm up in the air. I know the ammo in this case was good because I've shot that ammo in, in many other 22s recently. It's not overly waxed and it does a pretty good job. I'm leaning to the fact that maybe I loaded the magazine weird, but on the other side of things, it was all shot suppressed and maybe the gun as it kind of fouls up, you might run into another issue or two. I got out that magazine, plugged in a new one, racked the bolt and we were good to go. I didn't have any other issues, so I don't know. Regardless, the one thing is, is it does seem that this gun is running a lot better than it was. And that's, that's very exciting to me because now it is an awesome little plinker. The trigger is seriously breaking in. I don't really want to dry fire it because it is a 22 and I don't have a snap cap, but I got to say guys, the trigger has broken in a good bit and it's a lot faster down range. So I really enjoy that. That's the one nice thing about 22 triggers is it's very inexpensive to actually get some rounds down range on that trigger and have the manipulation go more and more and that's gonna break that trigger in a good bit. So that's feeling good. And just with the stock and the vertical grip, this thing is, is just a blast at the range. That is pretty much going to wrap up this upgrades video on the Tipman M422. This thing is sweet. I've had absolutely no issues with it. Now that I have all these upgrades and more rounds down range, I'm loving it. And I think for the price point, these Tipmans are tough to beat and for the training. Ammunition nowadays still sucks to buy, especially to buy a lot of. So the fact that I can buy 500 rounds every single week to bring to the range with this 22 is a blast. If you guys have any other questions on this Tipman here or anything else on the channel, please throw them down below and I will get back to you. And while you're down there, head up to that description, check out the links to support the channel. And as always, stay tuned for more great videos coming soon.